And so it's called the WOW signal from 1977. And I checked it. Turns out that it came from about the same direction in the sky. Back in 1977, astronomers picked up the most mysterious radio signal ever detected from space. The famous WOW signal that lasted 72 seconds and seemed to come from an intelligent source. For nearly 50 years, scientists couldn't explain it. Now, we've discovered something incredible. A bizarre object called 3I Atlas is heading toward our solar system from almost the exact same spot in the sky where that signal originated. But here's the crazy part. This thing is breaking every rule we know about comets. It's glowing green when it shouldn't, spewing nickel into space at impossible temperatures and behaving like nothing we've ever seen before. Is this just an incredible coincidence or could 3i Atlas actually be the source of humanity's most famous alien signal? Are we witnessing first contact? the night that changed everything. Back in August 1977, something incredible happened at Ohio State University that would puzzle scientists for decades. The Big Ear Radio Telescope was doing its usual job of scanning the cosmos when it picked up something that made everyone stop and take notice. It was a radio signal unlike anything they had ever seen before. This wasn't just background noise from space or some random cosmic event. This was something that looked artificial, something that seemed deliberate. The signal was so remarkable that when astronomer Jerry Eamon saw it on the computer printout, he grabbed a red pen and wrote WOW right next to it. That's how the famous WOW signal got its name. For 72 seconds, this powerful narrowband radio transmission beamed toward Earth from somewhere deep in space. It was the kind of signal that made SETI scientists sit up and pay attention because it had all the characteristics they would expect from an intelligent civilization trying to make contact. What made this discovery even more exciting was that nobody could explain it. For almost 50 years now, scientists have tried to come up with natural explanations for what could have caused such a signal. Some theories have been suggested, but most of them just don't hold up when you really examine the evidence. The WOW signal remains one of the most compelling pieces of evidence that we might not be alone in the universe. Why scientists got so excited. The WOW signal wasn't just any old radio transmission from space. It had specific features that made it incredibly interesting to researchers studying the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence. First off, it was a narrowband signal, which means it was focused on a very specific frequency rather than spread out across many frequencies. Most natural phenomena in space produce broadband signals that cover a wide range of frequencies, but this one was laser-focused on just one spot on the radio spectrum. Even more fascinating was the exact frequency where the signal appeared. It showed up at 1420.4556 MHz, which is incredibly close to what scientists call the hydrogen line. This is the natural frequency that hydrogen atoms emit radio waves at, and hydrogen happens to be the most common element in the entire universe. Any advanced civilization would know this, which is why scientists have long thought that if aliens wanted to send a universal message that any intelligent species would understand, they would use this frequency. The signal was also moving toward Earth at about 10 kilometers per second, which created what astronomers call a blue shift. This meant that whatever was sending the signal was heading in our direction. The power required to send such a strong signal across the vast distances of space would be enormous. If it came from hundreds of light years away, as originally thought, it would need the energy output of something like a massive space-based transmitter operated by an advanced civilization. But here's the thing that really frustrated scientists. The signal never repeated. According to SETI protocols, for a signal to be considered legitimate evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence, it has to happen again so that multiple telescopes can confirm it and study it properly. Despite numerous attempts to detect the signal again from that same patch of sky, it never showed up. This left the WOW signal in a strange limbo where it was too interesting to ignore but couldn't be officially confirmed as artificial. A new player enters the scene. Fast forward to recent times, and astronomers discovered something called 
Eye Atlas. This object has been causing quite a stir in the scientific community because it's behaving in ways that comets simply aren't supposed to behave. When researchers first started studying it, they assumed it was just another interstellar comet passing through our solar system. We've seen these before, like 2i Borisov, which visited us a few years back and behaved pretty much exactly like astronomers expected an interstellar comet should behave. But 3i Atlas is different, really different. As scientists have gathered more data about this object, they've discovered a whole series of anomalies that don't match up with what we know about how comets work. These aren't just minor quirks or measurement errors. These are fundamental characteristics that challenge our understanding of what this object actually is. Some researchers have started wondering if 3i Atlas might not be a natural object at all. The more astronomers study 3i Atlas, the more questions arise. Its behavior is so unusual that it's forcing scientists to consider possibilities they wouldn't normally entertain. Could this be some kind of artificial object? Could it be what some researchers have started calling an asteroid ship, where an advanced civilization has hollowed out or modified a rocky object to serve as a spacecraft? These ideas might sound like science fiction, but when dealing with an object that breaks all the rules, scientists have to keep their minds open to all possibilities. What makes three I Atlas even more intriguing is that it's not just one anomaly. It's a whole collection of bizarre characteristics that keep piling up. Each new observation seems to add another piece to a puzzle that doesn't fit together in any way that makes sense, according to our current understanding of comets and asteroids. The incredible coincidence. Here's where things get really interesting. When astronomers traced back the path of 3i Atlas through space, they discovered something absolutely mind-blowing. This object appears to have originated from roughly the same region of sky where the WOW signal came from back in 1977. Now, it's not exactly the same spot. The coordinates are separated by about 4 degrees of right ascension and 8 degrees of declination. But that's still remarkably close, considering the vastness of space. Think about what this means for a moment. We have one of the most famous unexplained signals in the history of astronomy, and now we have a mysterious object that doesn't behave like anything we've seen before, and both of them are connected to the same general area of the sky. The odds of this being just a random coincidence are pretty slim. It's the kind of correlation that makes scientists start asking some very serious questions about what might really be going on. If 3i Atlas had been much closer to Earth back in 1977, generating the WOW signal wouldn't have required nearly as much power as originally calculated. Instead of needing the output of some massive alien transmitter, it could have been produced with something more like the power output of a nuclear reactor here on Earth. That's still a lot of energy, but it's within the realm of what an advanced technological civilization might be able to manage with a spacecraft. But wait, there's more to this connection. Remember how the WOW signal was blue shifted, indicating that its source was moving toward Earth at about 10 kilometers per second? Well, 3II Atlas is currently approaching our solar system at about 60 kilometers per second. That's much faster, but here's the thing. If 3II Atlas is an artificial object capable of changing its speed, it might not have been moving that fast back in 1977. Maybe it detected something interesting in our solar system and decided to accelerate toward us. The mystery of the green glow. One of the most puzzling things about 3I Atlas is that it's turning green, and according to everything we know about comets, it shouldn't be doing that. Now, green comets aren't unheard of. In fact, we're observing other comets right now that have a distinctly green color. There's even C2025 R2 Swan, which shows a beautiful green appearance as it moves through our solar system. But there's a very specific reason why some comets turn green, and 3 I Atlas doesn't seem to meet that criteria. Comets turn green because of something called diatomic carbon, also known as C2. This happens when carbon-based molecules in the comet start to heat up and sublimate as the comet gets closer to the sun. The carbon forms these two atom molecules that glow green when they're energized by solar radiation. It's a well-understood process, and astronomers can predict which comets will turn green 
based on their composition. Here's the problem with 3i Atlas. Spectroscopic analysis shows that it appears to be what scientists call a carbon-depleted comet. This means it doesn't seem to have much carbon-based material in it at all. Without significant amounts of carbon compounds, there shouldn't be enough diatomic carbon forming to create that characteristic green glow. Yet there it is, turning green anyway, as if it's following a completely different set of rules than every other comet we've ever observed. This isn't just a minor discrepancy that can be explained away with measurement errors or unusual circumstances. This is a fundamental contradiction between what we observe and what our scientific models predict should happen. When objects in space start behaving in ways that contradict well-established physics, it usually means we're dealing with something we don't understand. In the case of 3i Atlas, it's adding to the growing list of characteristics that make this object unlike anything we've encountered before. The nickel problem that has scientists baffled. Perhaps the most bizarre aspect of 3i Atlas is what researchers are calling the nickel anomaly. Recent observations using the European Very Large Telescope in Chile have revealed something that has never been seen before in any comet throughout the history of astronomy. The coma, which is the cloud of gas and dust surrounding the nucleus of the comet, contains an unusual amount of nickel with almost no iron present. This is completely unprecedented because in every other comet ever studied, nickel and iron appear together in ratios that are similar to what we see throughout the solar system. When 2 E. Borisov visited us as the first confirmed interstellar comet, it showed exactly the expected nickel to iron ratio that astronomers predicted. But 3i Atlas is showing tons of nickel and hardly any iron at all, which makes absolutely no sense from a natural formation perspective. What makes this even more puzzling is that these metallic atoms shouldn't be appearing in the coma at all at 3i Atlas's current distance from the sun. The temperature of the comet's surface is still too cold for metals to sublimate and form the gas that creates the coma. Typically, comets have to get much closer to the sun before we start seeing metallic elements in their spectra. The fact that we're seeing nickel at all suggests that something unusual is happening on or inside this object. The European Very Large Telescope data covers observations from when 3i Atlas was between 3.14 and 2.14 astronomical units from the Sun. Throughout this entire period, nickel was consistently detected, but iron only showed up in trace amounts when the object got closer than 2.64 astronomical units. Even then, the iron levels were far below what would be expected for a normal comet. This pattern doesn't match anything we've seen before and suggests that whatever is producing the nickel is fundamentally different from normal cometary processes. What could explain these impossible characteristics? When you step back and look at all these anomalies together, it becomes clear that 3i Atlas is challenging our basic understanding of what comets can be. The combination of the wrong color for its composition, metals appearing at temperatures where they shouldn't sublimate, and the complete absence of expected iron alongside abundant nickel paints a picture that doesn't fit with natural comet formation and behavior. Some scientists have started considering the possibility that what we're seeing might be evidence of artificial activity rather than natural processes. The specific pattern of nickel without iron could be explained as waste products or tailings from some kind of manufacturing process. Maybe an advanced civilization is using this object as a base of operations and is producing nickel-based alloys for repairs or construction. The excess material could be vented into space, creating the unusual spectroscopic signatures we're detecting. This would also explain why 3II Atlas is turning green without the carbon compounds that normally cause this coloration. If artificial lighting or energy systems are operating on the object, they could be producing emissions in the green part of the spectrum that have nothing to do with diatomic carbon. Advanced propulsion systems or industrial processes might create byproducts that mimic the appearance of a natural green comet while following completely different physical mechanisms. The timing and location connection with the WOW signal 
adds another layer to this speculation. If 3i Atlas really was the source of that famous transmission, it might have been conducting some kind of survey or reconnaissance of our solar system back in 1977. The signal could have been a powerful radar pulse designed to map out planets and assess whether any of them might harbor life. When the survey was complete, the object might have begun its approach toward our system for a closer look. The need for direct investigation. Despite all the attention 3i Atlas has received, there's one obvious step that apparently hasn't been taken yet. No one has pointed a radio telescope directly at this object to listen for artificial signals. Given all the anomalies surrounding 3ii Atlas and its potential connection to the WOW signal, this seems like an obvious thing to do. Radio telescopes from projects like SOHO and other observatories have the capability to detect artificial transmissions if they're being produced. The fact that this hasn't happened yet is frustrating for researchers who think 3ii Atlas deserves more focused attention. If the object is artificial, there might be ongoing radio emissions that could provide definitive proof of its nature. These could be communication signals, navigation beacons, or operational transmissions related to whatever activities might be taking place on or inside the object. Without looking, we'll never know what we might be missing. Current observations have focused mainly on optical and spectroscopic analysis, which has revealed all these fascinating anomalies, but hasn't provided the smoking gun evidence that would definitively prove artificial origin. Radio astronomy offers a different approach that could potentially detect the kinds of signatures that would be impossible to explain through natural processes. Even if no signals are detected, that information would still be valuable in helping to rule out certain possibilities. The scientific community seems to be approaching 3i Atlas with a mixture of curiosity and caution. While the anomalies are undeniably intriguing, making the leap to conclusions about artificial origin requires extraordinary evidence. However, the accumulating list of unexplained characteristics suggests that this object deserves the most thorough investigation possible using every tool at our disposal. Radio astronomy should definitely be part of that comprehensive approach. Thanks for watching another episode. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.